Okay, thank you uh, very much um, for having me here. And it's, we've had an absolutely fantastic few days in Helsinki, uh, and it's uh, getting towards the end of uh, this cost action, so it's been a, a great <coughs> opportunity to uh, reflect on where we've been. Uh, now, you'll have to excuse me, I put this uh, presentation together before this morning, um, understandably, uh, uh, and so my uh, understanding of urban fabrics was uh, entirely immature, if it even existed at all. And so um, I might have uh, reframed a few things uh, had, had, I, had I known a bit more beforehand, but I've tried to draw out at least what I understood uh, 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 some of the relevance of uh, this action and some of the findings, some of which are entirely kind of tangential to the notion of urban fabrics, some of which I think uh, are, are, are very relevant. And so I'll try to draw out um, a bit more on those uh, and that part of our, our, our work. And so I don't think um, most people in the room would, would, would disagree with this, that there is a widely um, recognised need to uh, rethink and reconfigure our urban areas so that they uh, are lower resource consumers, uh, emit less pollution, uh, and generally have uh, greater resilience to uh, phenomena like um, global environmental change and so on. But of course this is not easy, because to do this requires thinking across a whole range of different uh, dimensions or sectors within uh, an urban area. Uh, land use, transport, uh, resource flows, building form and function, etc. Uh, and we just tend not to be used to thinking um, in those ways uh, on the whole, and of course uh, even those people that are able to kind of cut across some of these disciplines, it's still not easy to actually interpret information from different sectors, often presented in very different ways, to inform policy uh, meaningfully. And so it was with that in mind uh, that we developed the idea of this cost action network to get people together from these different backgrounds who were interested in uh, how their own uh, area interacted across the city and to other sectors and such um, but also how you then go about uh, constructing integrated assessments and I'll try and explain what I mean by that in a, in a few slides time uh, to help inform uh, decision making and so um, our action was structured around uh, these four themes one very much around uh, the kind of the modeling side of things uh, uh, the, 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 the next two boxes were really different ways of thinking about cross-cutting issues in the city. So um, one of the things about climate change has been that it's forced people to think um, across multiple sectors in urban areas, indeed, as have um, uh, issues like ecosystem services, uh, etc. And the final aspect was around governance and decision-making uh, and how uh, that could be more integrated. And indeed, that is... Uh, uh, one of the features of um, uh, this, this kind of idea of urban fabrics, uh, thinking across multiple integrated scales. And so this is a, 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 a kind of a horrendous wiring diagram which shows only a very, very limited uh, amount of the complexity of issues within cities. And this is a climate change perspective um, uh, developed by a uh, 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 one of my colleagues in, in, in the action, and it sort of shows uh, how a number of features propagate through the city, through multiple sectors, uh, have multiple impacts. And this is the sort of problem that we have to try and, uh, if you like, simplify uh, to, to, to understand this kind of integrated uh, assessment process. But likewise, this is perhaps another way of thinking about the problem. Quite often, policymakers working on um, uh, energy or in the water sector or, or some will take a, a well-meant intervention in their own area and the idea being that they say well we can reduce or improve our air quality by doing this that and the other um, but of course what they often fail to see is that that can have a negative impact uh, in other sectors and areas of the city as a result of the sort of complexity that was hinted at in the previous diagram 
And so this is just an example, a list that um, we, we, we put together just showing a, a few of those sorts of trade-offs that can often occur um, by well-meant, usually, uh, interventions and, 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 and options, but can, that, that, that ultimately lead to uh, some uh, uh, negative impact elsewhere. Uh, and so I, I, I absolutely love this, uh, this image that I'm about to reveal properly um, in, in a moment. And this was not, unfortunately, produced uh, uh, by someone within our action. Uh, but um, uh, this really gets across uh, one of the challenges associated with integrated assessment modelling. Here we have this uh, lovely little mermaid, um, uh, half lady, half fish. Uh, and put together in a very nice way, and you might say the integration of those uh, is, uh, is very appealing. But what if you integrate uh, person and fish in another way? You might come across an image like this, um, not so uh, uh, pleasant. But the idea behind this, and this is, if you like, a, uh, an exaggeration perhaps of integrated assessments going wrong. If we don't think about how things are joined up in the right way, we might end up with the inverse mermaid uh, rather than the real deal. And so, to try and explain how this is perhaps a bit more relevant to cities, um, and uh, I'm going to draw on an example of, 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 uh, of some of my own research, which was, was also a stimulus for developing this action, and this was developed through the uh, Technical Centre for Climate Change Research. Um, but uh, one of the things, the first things that we, we, we had to recognise was, of course, a lot of the drivers of change uh, uh, within cities come from outside, wider ranges of socioeconomics, uh, uh, climate, uh, and so on. Um, but of course, these kind of wider drivers uh, propagate through and have an impact on the local and regional economy um, before they are in some way realised in space. Um, but uh, and this is where I think we start to get into the, 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 the field and, and the way of thinking about these integrated assessments in terms of uh, the different urban fabrics. This is uh, some information from London, each of those blobs there in, around, uh, around Westminster um, and Parliament in London shows a place you can pick up one of these cycle hire schemes, so what we nickname Boris Bikes after the mayor who uh, introduced them, uh, and those red lines show uh, major um, uh, streams of people uh, during, um, dur during, during the kind of commuting period. So people will arrive perhaps at a station uh, and they'll get on their bike and they'll go across to where the, the, the jobs are. Um, this is quite a small area actually, uh, but in recent years the bike scheme has, has, has uh, expanded substantially. So you can see um, some of the parks on that left hand image, uh, hopefully you can see them on the right hand image. and. Uh, uh, where, where it's now going all the way over to the sort of the east end of London, a major business district, and, and perhaps one of the, th the things that might be interesting to think about in the context of this urban fabric is to what extent by adding these new bike hire opportunities we are changing the nature of the uh, bicycle scale fabric. Um, are we just improving the opportunities or are we actually do we need to provide a different sort of infrastructure as well as these bike hire opportunities to actually um, propagate through and have a meaningful impact uh, on um, cycle-wide accessibility? Now, this isn't work we've um, done ourselves, uh, but I thought I'd try and draw it out in this bigger conversation because one of the things that uh, uh, is also relevant is the, the wider transport catchment of a city like London. Here, are our commuters coming from all over the place. You can see the kind of the boundary of the Greater London Authority and a whole load of blue lines coming in, highlighting the enormous transport catchment area of London. The Greater London Authority is about 1,600 square kilometres. So what we're looking at here uh, is, is um, two, uh, probably five, <laughs> about maybe even five, five or, or, or ten times the size of, in aerial terms of these mega uh, transport systems that feed in, whether they're road or, or rail in this case, um, 
to, to, to London's commute. So here, very different scales of operation, um, but it's uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, study that, that has fed into this particular integrated assessment, these kind of larger scale uh, uh, measures of accessibility. And so we've used this to um, inform the development of our, 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 our modelling, um, uh, and then looking at a range of different land use scenarios to, to, to understand how those influence things like uh, climate risks, flooding, heat wave risks, uh, droughts, etc. And so this is what we sort of mean by integrated assessment, it's trying to understand a range of these features. And so just to give a little specifics, um, this is uh, a, a, an example of, of how um, Crossrail uh, alters the uh, accessibility within central London. So this is a, a new infrastructure project that's being developed at the moment. Um, uh, and, and these are the sorts of uh, measures we can use to look at how uh, different interventions uh, might influence the accessibility of people to jobs uh, across London. And so this is a sort of information at a range of different scales, whether it's um, at, at the kind of mega commuting uh, from outside London, or indeed within central London itself, um, to drive a, a range of different land use scenarios um, shown up here under different population projection and spatial development strategies. Each of those uh, bar, uh, bars represents a range of different things. And you'll see I've, I've gone out to the, the Thames Estuary here, and I'll hopefully explain why in the, the next slides, that each of these different strategies has a very different impact uh, on the risks associated with flooding. So here uh, we can see the same uh, land use strategies driven by these different uh, assumptions or uh, understandings of uh, accessibility across a, a range of different scales uh, within the city and we can look at um, uh, uh, how these impact upon, in this case, the risk of flooding. But the purpose of the integrated assessment, of course, is that you can use the same information to understand other check dimensions of change. I'm not going to go into uh, all of those, but one of the important things I wanted to write here is that it's not just um, uh, uh, like transport that operates at these multiple scales uh, and fabrics. Here, if we're to understand uh, flooding processes, we have to take that out east of the geographical or administrative, rather I should say, boundary of London. If we are to understand uh, issues around water resources and water availability, we have to understand west of London, where the, the river that provides all London's water is um, uh, feeds in. And so these issues of fabrics, if you like, in my mind at least, uh, are, 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 aren't just about um, uh, different scales, but different sectors and, and, and different issues, and they all operate and play out at a range of different scales. And these are the sorts of things where I think this process of integrated assessment and some of the stuff that we've been doing um, in, in this work, um, and this is one, one example, and I'm talking about my own because I know it's better than the others, uh, so, so excuse me for being a little bit um, uh, uh, parochial, but uh, it's one example of how um, these sorts of models can be used to understand multiple facets. So some of the other things here we looked at were also the implications of these different strategies on greenhouse gases. And we work very closely with a range of stakeholders, including the Transport for London, the Mayor's Office, um, and those responsible for water supply, etc., to explore these different risks. All of these organisations have different amounts of responsibility for these different issues. And so getting them around the table to hammer out their kind of part of the urban fabric, if you like, uh, and, and understand their implications of their decisions on others is the very essence of, of these sorts of integrated assessment approaches. So here, stepping away from London, um, one of the features of, of this, this work was to actually look at a number of different examples um, uh, of, of integrated assessment approaches, uh, all driven by different things. That one in London, driven by uh, 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 the, the, the UK's um, uh, obsession with, with, with climate change at the moment, um, or at least five years ago. Uh, uh, others driven by different features, they, they all have kind of sus you know, aspirations of, of sustainability at the heart of them, but they're all put up together in different ways. Some are indicator-based, some are 
um, mega models of, 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 of everything. Um, some, uh, like the one I just presented, were more kind of loose coupling uh, and trying to take a sort of systems perspective of, 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 of these problems. Um, some were driven by uh, research-based inquiry, uh, some by stakeholder demands, wanting to understand something about their city. Um, but they all have this thing in common of trying to understand trade-offs and synergies, the, if you like, the missed opportunities from not um, uh, implementing certain measures uh, at the right time. And I'm going I'm to step away now from, from looking in detail the city and perhaps some of the other, other aspects of, of the action. And, and if you like, I think that activity was perhaps the most immediately relevant to this concept of, of, of urban fabrics. But one of the great things about cost action, and, and I'm sure um, we'll hear some similar lessons from, from Lucas' talk in a moment, is the opportunity to get people from very different backgrounds and cities and, and locations around Europe together and bring those local, that local knowledge um, into one place. So here, we're looking at um, uh, uh, some summary diagrams of an analyses of climate policy in 200 EU cities. So I've never seen a, a diagram quite like this before, where on the x-axis, we see a time frame for um, emissions reduction. I'm looking at the graph on the left here at the moment. Um, apologies for the clutter. Um, each of those bars represents one of these cities. And so we can see, and, and a few of them are the capital, but the capital and major cities have been uh, marked out uh, so you can sort of orient yourself a little bit. And you can see very different uh, degrees uh, and time frames um, for uh, reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions across these cities uh, in Europe. So uh, if you like, for the first time, starting to put up a picture of ambition uh, 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 of, of a range of different cities. And these bar charts on the, the right hand side of that image show the types of measures that are being planned and proposed by different cities. Um, I should say these, this, this, this data is of course always subject to change and evolution and, and, uh, and that if you picked out a city that is that since I've dated this plan it won't be reflected in a, a graph that was produced a year or so ago. Um, but you can see here that um, in all these cities, um, bizarrely, uh, and this, I mean, it looks good, but 89% of cities have, have identified transport, for example, as being uh, uh, where they want to introduce some mitigation measures. What surprised me most was that 11% of cities didn't think there were mitigation opportunities, or opportunities to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in their transport sector. Um, so that was, a, 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 although it sounds like a big number, a very positive, actually, why have 11% of cities not used or are not thinking about opportunities in transport? But we start to get a picture that I've never seen before of, of the wealth and, and the range of activities um, uh, across Europe. Uh, and honing in a bit further, we can start to see how, and this is just presented for uh, 30 cities in the UK, um, different uh, different cities are, are progressing along this line, not just about planning and about ambition, but which of them are actually uh, implementing actions on the ground. And you can see even across the UK where the government has told us uh, that the country needs to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. They've put this in law, 80% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. And yet if we look at the cities, a large proportion of the cities down there do not actually have in place at the moment any mechanism for monitoring how they are reducing greenhouse gases. So how are we going to be sure that we hit an 80% reduction, I will never know. Um, uh, one other point I wanted to draw is this issue around governance. And uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of work has been focused around uh, green infrastructure and um, here we can see some, some, some different amounts of, of green space in, in, in two of the cities that are featured in this, uh, this analysis. Um, and, and why green infrastructure? Well, it, it provides a sort of a, a lens for integration. It is by its nature, it provides lots of benefits, lots of opportunities. Um, but, but of course, uh, when you are creating or, 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 or maintaining something as green infrastructure, you are, if you like, also losing and constraining space and opportunities uh, in other ways. But one of the focuses here was to use green infrastructure as an opportunity to explore how 
Um, it uh, acts as a, 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 an integrating um, feature of, of, of cities, uh, but also what, how, how do you structure your, your policy of governance to get the best out of uh, these kind of uh, uh, multiple benefited spaces? Uh, and one of the things that they are identified by looking at, in this case, in, in four countries, was that actually, um, uh, in, in terms of spatial planning, there was some good coverage of the policy area, but in terms of sustainable development and stormwater management, there were great opportunities or, or, or threats because it was missing the opportunities for filling in some of those policy gaps to make sure that the green, the green infrastructure benefits and, and, and so on were maximised in a more integrated fashion. <coughs> um, so, I just want to draw out one, one important lesson I thought, and that is the, uh, it's, 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 it's a quote that came out of our work in London, but it's, it, it, the important thing here is that um, Alex Nixon, who's in charge of um, adaptation and water management in Greater London, uh, uh, working with us over the years, started to recognise that this kind of integrated approach to understanding his city and some of the problems he was trying to deal with um, was uh, important if he was to try and uh, negotiate with the other actors uh, within London, uh, responsible for other different parts of the urban fabrics, uh, to make sure uh, he could do uh, his job and achieve his, um, uh, if you like, area of responsibility uh, as effectively as possible. And so I thought it's a nice way, a nice positive way of ending on not my own reflections, but someone else's about the importance of integrated assessment in uh, affecting uh, uh, positive change within cities. And on that, I'll end, and I don't know whether we have questions now or later, but um, thank you very much for your attention. We have questions now or? We, uh, we, we, we will have a small change of the program in after lunch. Uh, so we are now suggesting that we can take a couple of questions now, then we break for lunch, and then we continue with, with Luca Bertolini's presentation on the other post action. Um, uh, so if there are any questions for, for Richard at the moment, Yeah. yeah, integrated. Yeah, do you have um, Yeah, as you know, our action, which we described after lunch, is more about using instrument, not so much developing. But of course, that's also a goal you have, and apparently, it is happening. As I read this quotation, can you tell us a bit more about how these instruments are used by stakeholders and possibly? feature of the instruments that either help this use of rather make it more difficult. Uh, are you asking just about accessibility? No, 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 your, your integrated right. accessible models, yes. Well, I think that, I mean, they're used in different ways um, by different people. Uh, when we started the example I presented in London, uh, we had rather naive ambitions of producing some tool that uh, uh, the, 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 the people in London would, would go click, click, click and explore a range of things, but actually um, that was not something that they, it turned out that they wanted. And, uh, that spared us quite a bit of extra work as well. Uh, but uh, the, so, to some extent, I think because these, these models can be quite complex, these studies can be quite complex, the process of working together and developing that kind of shared understanding is as important as. Uh, the kind of the numbers that come out of the model and so actually this kind of idea of, of, of bringing people together for collaborative um, uh, activities and discourse and sharing insights across sectors um, is as important as, as, as any of the kind of quantitative analysis that we, we, we ultimately produce. I, I don't know if that's the same in, in all the cities but it certainly seems to be a, a kind of a a shared, um, a shared conclusion from a number of the cities in that, that kind of 10, 10, 10, uh, 10, 10, 10 modelling studies that um, at the end of the day a lot of people don't want 
these big models that can do everything, but they do want to understand the insights that they provide, and often they're not best delivered by a, a, a report at the end, but by working together throughout the process, and, and they, you know, creating that, that continuous dialogue and, and conversation 